Hey, grade six. Uh, today we are going to be tackling a new uh, topic called multiplying decimals by whole numbers. Uh, this is just an introduction. Um, and so we're going to start looking at some connections between things. And so our learning target for this, uh, like it says on there, is that students will multiply decimals up to the tenths place. So that's one decimal uh, by a whole number. And so there's a couple skills that you need to have um, before you uh, are able to do this or to follow along with us. Uh, and so you need to be able to multiply a multi-digit number by a single digit number. Uh, you need to be familiar with base 10 stuff. Uh, we'll be showing some, I'll, I'll be showing some of that stuff uh, for decimal regrouping. And you need to be able to multiply multi-digit decimal numbers by powers of 10. Uh, and we covered that stuff in a previous video as well. Uh, so let's begin. Just a quick reminder. This is our base 10 stuff that we work with. So this uh, block of 100 little squares, this represents uh, one. Uh, this one rod represents one tenth, and these little boxes represent one hundredth. And then th there's the decimal equivalents as well. So we have one, we have 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. And then so we reveal some stuff. So then uh, one one uh, is going to equal uh, is going to equal a uh, hundred hundredths. Uh, one one is going to equal 10 tenths. And then one tenth is going to equal 10 hundredths. Okay, so the way that works is there's a hundred little squares in here. And so that hundred hundredths all put together uh, adds up to one. Uh, if you want one, you would need 10 of these rods put together. So it's 10 tenths. And then if you want one tenth, it's gonna be um, 10 of these little squares. So it's 10 hundredths, which is what we said over here. All right, so the first question that we're gonna be looking at is uh, how many tenths are in uh, a one? And so here we have uh, 10 tenths, which I just said is, is a one. And so if we wanna show that as a multiplication question, because what we're saying here is this is like 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, et cetera, all equals one. And so what we're saying is that we can rewrite that as a multiplication question of uh, 10 times 0 0.1 or 10 groups of 0 0.1, and that's gonna equal one. Now we remember from our decimal video the other day that uh, when we multiply a number by a power of 10 that especially if we multiply it by 10 that the decimal place here goes one place to the right which gives us one okay now a bit of a trickier one then if we have eight tenths what would eight tenths add up to well there instead of there being 10 uh, rods there would only be eight and so we'd end up with 0 0.8 uh, and so what we could say then is that 0 0.8 times uh, one, or sorry, eight times 0 0.1 would be 0 0.8. So then if we have 13 tenths, that can regroup as one one and then three tenths. So you'd have uh, 13 times 0 0.1, because each of these rods represents 0 0.1, there's 13 groups of them. So 13 times 0 0.1 is going to equal 1.3. Okay, and so there's our question there, 13 times 0 0.1. So that's that's the first bit of stuff that we're trying to get across. Uh, and so if you want, you can pause the video and work on number one in your workbook on page 31. Uh, and I'm going to keep going on. Now, what we're going to try to do is show the connection between uh, multiplying uh, by 0 0.1 and then dividing by 10. And so it says I want to find 13 divided by 10 in two ways. So method one is to divide a whole number by 10. And so we said the other day that when we divide something by 10 that the decimal place is going to go to, well, to the left for you guys. Uh, and so 13 divided by 10 uh, is going to equal uh, 1.3. Okay, because we shift the decimal place 
one place to the left. The second method is multiplying a whole number by a decimal. Uh, there is actually a relationship between dividing by a power of 10 and then multiplying by like a tenth, right? So if we divide something by 10, it is the same as multiplying it by a tenth. Um, so that's what we're going to try to show here. So remember that 1 divided by 10 equals a tenth. So we can say that 1 divided by uh, 10 is going to equal 0 0.1. Okay, it's the same stuff. So since there are 13 ones in 13, when I divide by 10, I get 13 tenths. I can break them apart into groups of 10. So then 13 divided by 10 is the same, and there's an equal sign here, so it means the same as 13 times 1 tenth, or 13 times 0 0.1. Uh, so we said that that was 1.3. It is, it, so just, I gotta point that out again. 13 divided by 10 equals the same as 13 times 0 0.1. It means the same thing. It will get you the same answer. Okay, so here's some practice. You can pause it and try it on your own for just a quick sec, and then you can unpause it and follow along with the answers. So 29 times 0 0.1 is the same thing as 29 divided by 10. And so that's going to give us 2.9. 37 divided by 0 0.1 is the same as uh, 37 times, sorry, divided by 10, which equals 3.7. 681 times 0 0.1 is the same thing as 681 divided by 10, which is going to give us 68.1. 3,971 times uh, 0 0.1 is the same as 3,974 divided by 10, which is going to give us 397.4. And then don't get confused. It's just in a different order. It's just still the same thing. Um, because 32, or sorry, 0 0.1 times 32 is the same as 32 times 0 0.1, which is still the same as 32 divided by 10, which is still 3.2. I think there's a bonus question here, questions that you can try on your own. Again, we're just going to shift the decimal place over one spot. So you would get, uh, what is that, 12,345,678.9, and this one would just be 0 0.6. Uh, and so you can, if you want, you can pause it uh, and work on numbers two and three in your workbooks on page 31. Uh, and I'm going to move on to the next slide. So the next concept is that we're going to be multiplying by 0 0.1. Now we saw with multiplying by, uh, sorry, multiplying by 0 0.01, so a hundredth and then a thousandth as well. We saw that when we multiply by 0 0.1 that you shift the decimal place to the left one spot. <clears throat> When you multiply by 0 0.01, you're going to shift the decimal place two spots to the left. And when you multiply by 0 0.001, you're going to multi uh, shift it three places to the left. Uh, and it's the same thing as when you uh, divide by 100 or divide by 1,000. You're shifting the decimal place over uh, a certain number of spots. Okay. Uh, so likewise here, uh, to multiply by 0 0.001, you can shift the decimal point um, three, I'll try and write it, uh, three places to the left. Okay, so multiplying 317 times 0 0.01, it's going to go, uh, oops, sorry about that with the toolbar, uh, I clicked the wrong button. Um, so we're going to be shifting uh, the decimal place two places to the left because it's times 0 0.01. And so that's going to give us uh, 3.17. Uh, 452 times 0 0.01. Again, we're going to go two places to the left. So it's going to give us 4.52. 36 times 0 0.01, same deal. It's going to give us 0.36 because it goes two places to the left. 
2768 times 0 0.01 is going to give us 27.68 because we two places to the left. Uh, now this one, 2768 times 0 0.001, it's going to go three places to the left. So that's going to be 2.768. <clears throat> three times 0 0.01 is going to give us 0 0.03 and then 29 times 0 0.001 is going to give us 0 0.029 and then 4 times 0 0.001 is going to give us 0 0.004 and there's a bonus question there to move this decimal place over two spots is going to give us 40 43,751.09 uh, and so you can pause it now and work on numbers four and five in your workbooks. That starts, that's still on page 31. So the next thing that we're going to move on to is multiplying decimals up to tenths by whole numbers. And so the question here is, uh, how can we use addition to find these products? Well, we know that multiplication is just a quick way to write repeated addition. So I can say that's um, five plus five plus five, right? And that's, we know that's gonna be 15. Uh, the same thing here, uh, we could say, well, that's 2.1 plus 2.1 plus 2.1, right? Uh, so what they're gonna do is then use base 10 materials. So this is 2.1 in base 10. Uh, and so when you add all that stuff up together, you get two, four, six, and then one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. So you would get uh, 6.3, and I'll just write that out. You get 6.3. So that's the same thing. Three times 2.1 is 6.3. So then there's some practice here. You can um, pause it for a second and do them you're going to find the product mentally by multiplying each digit separately. There's no carrying, there's no regrouping. Okay. So you have 3.2 times two, uh, three times two is six and two times two is four. Don't forget the decimal place. Okay. Uh, two times three is six. Three times three is nine. Again, don't forget the decimal place. Uh, one times two is two, four times two is eight. So we have 1.1 times 4, so that is going to give us 4.4. Uh, here you're going to have 4.3 times 2 is going to give you 8.6, and then 26.4. Uh, and so you can pause it now and actually work on 6 through 10. Uh, and that is on page 32 in your workbook. And we're going to move on to the last couple of things. So the last thing is just using a grid to multiply. Uh, that's going to be a couple of questions uh, in your workbook. And so again, you would have um, the same, same algorithm that we're, that we're used to, right? So it's 2 times 2 is 4. Put that right in there. 4. Uh, three times two is six, and then it is hard to write in here. Uh, one times two is two. So you would get here 264. Uh, now for using a decimal, if it's 13.2, uh, what they're saying here is that the decimal points line up on the grid. That is only going to work out if you're multiplying a decimal by a whole number. If you start multiplying a decimal by another decimal, uh, you're going to end up with more decimals in your answer. So just what we're doing is when we do these questions, what I have learned is just to count up the number of numbers after the decimal, and then that can get me there uh, to how many decimal places I need. Okay. Uh, so you end up with the same answer, 264, except it's 26.4. Okay. Uh, and so that's all the time we have. Uh, you can finish up the questions in your workbook if you haven't been uh, working on them as we go. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.